Welcome back. We're going to turn our old LCD screen into a digital picture frame. Uh, I look around out there for projects and something to do with my old LCD screens. I had quite a few piled up and uh, I really wanted a digital picture frame. And I looked around to see if anybody had any more that I could, that I could use and I couldn't find any. I found quite a few where people turned their old laptop screen into a digital picture frame, but nobody had turned their old computer monitor into one. So. Uh, I decided to try to figure it out, put one together. Um, first thing I did was took it apart, took all the plastic pieces off, and built a wood frame to go around it. Uh, mounted the screen into the box, and mounted my converter, or my USB reader, media player, into the computer monitor, and set it up to play. So here I put a few stock pictures I had from some of my other videos uh, onto, the, onto the SD card plugged it up and let it play for a while um, like you can use a memory card or you can play it from somewhere else I chose just to stick on the, on the memory card and let it play there is a remote that you can control it with you can set up the speed you can set up the timing on how long the picture stay up there before it moves on to the others and you can adjust the transitions and the colors and orientation uh, this is pretty much just default and let it play right now. Uh, later on, we set it up with pictures of the kids, pictures of our vacation, and we got it set up on the wall. Uh, you'll notice that one side is a little shorter so that it has ventilation and to allow for uh, the cords to hang out. Um, you know, changing our mind, we just got it sit on a floating shelf uh, behind the couch. So we got it turned upside down now. So we're at the top is actually the opening, a little ventilation to come in. So. I did build it out of three quarter inch plywood. Probably was a little overkill. It's a little thick, a little chunky, but uh, my thought was I wanted it to be able to hang on the wall, and, and I didn't know how heavy the monitor was going to be. And plus, this is the second one I built. Uh, the first one was an e machine. Uh, it was a landscape. It was 14 inches wide by like 12 inches tall, and <clears throat> it was a newer model. It didn't require a converter, um, but during the build, uh, I, I kind of dropped it. So, crack the screen, it didn't work anymore. So, this is actually the second one I built. Uh, and it's an older older model. It's a Dell. It's square. I really wanted the landscape and the graphics on the uh, E machine was, was cleaner. Uh, the Dell's a little older, a little grainier, but uh, it, it suits the purpose I had. The pictures turned out pretty good, and they scroll through pretty fast. So, uh, you're not looking at real fine detail. Plus, it's, it's huge. So. Uh, you can see them from across the room. It's just a good reminder of, of vacations we've been on and uh, where the kids have been. So uh, we enjoy it. It works out really well for us. So, uh, I don't show it where we painted it, but we did paint it white. Uh, I know that a lot of people want to put edge banding on uh, plywood, but since you painted it, or since we painted it, you really don't need edge banding. And, and I covered the, the faces of the plywood behind the front face. So, only the edge is seen with plywood. I don't notice it. We've got quite a few, few furniture pieces in the house that are they're plywood and they're just painted. And, and to be honest, you can't really tell. If you, if you sand them good and smooth and then put a good couple of coats of paint on there, uh, you can't really tell that they're, they're plywood from a distance. Uh, so here, I just took some scrap wood, cut it into two inch strips for the face, uh, then adjusted and cut some three inch pieces for the back so it would cover the uh, LCD screen plus the media player. Uh, I just went online and found a media player from Amazon. Uh, one, I already bought one that would convert uh, CRT directly to my TV. Uh, that was for the e-machine that I broke so I could pay a little extra. They do sell media players for 19 20 bucks. Uh, I paid a little extra so I didn't have to buy the cord and have all that stuff up in the back. Uh, you could probably buy it for a little cheaper. Plus, I had to end up buying an adapter because my Dell monitor was older. <laughs> it wouldn't convert directly to HDMI. So, I'll show you that mock-up too. Uh, it's a good thing because we may, help, we may run into that problem too. My older e or my newer e-machine converted the HDMI uh, to CRT really easily. But I went on the bottom of the so I had to buy an adapter. Uh, we played, uh, we played just fine. Uh, the Dell machine was older than uh, the Dell monitor, and it wouldn't convert, so I had to buy a converter and then a cord uh, to the HDMI to the CRT. So, 
Here I'm just putting some pocket screws into the face so that nothing's exposed. And I'll glue those up and then put some screws in it. And so I'm just clamping it together now uh, so that I can get ready to screw it together. I'll make the face frame, which is just two inches. Uh, it overlaps the monitor by about a quarter inch all the way around. And then gives me a, a good clearance because I'm going to take three quarters of it back uh, for the back frame. So it leaves me uh, about three quarters of an inch or so uh, worth of space to tuck wires and, and just to get it to make it get too hot. The old one, the old uh, computer monitor frame had a lot of bit holes, especially in the back, so I wanted to make sure it didn't get too hot. So we were just finishing putting the pocket screws in and making a face frame. It, it dries really pretty quickly, quickly. Plus, with the uh, the screws in there, uh, you can keep working as you go. It'll, it'll hold it tight while the glue dries. Uh, I have had projects where uh, I go back and take the screws out uh, because the screws aren't very expensive. Uh, compared to the rest of your project, so I'll uh, glue them together, let the glue dry, and then I may come in and take half of them back out, or, or take all of them back out, depending on what the usage is. So I think it's going to be be heavy used and heavy uh, work. I may I may leave them in, but a lot of times I'll take a lot of them back out. Plus, it reduces some of the weight. Those the screws can add up uh, when, when you build a project. You use two, three hundred of them. Cost and the weight. I like to do some of those things. Moving pretty slow. I, I don't know why I put the whole part of this video in here, but I um, want you to see this part it's critical because it, it needs to be good and square. And this needs to be good and tight. Uh, but when the front front matches up to the, uh, the back side of this face frame, matches up to the monitor as well. So uh, you can see there. Now we're going to put the uh, packer screws into the back pieces. So that you don't see them from the outside as you're walking down the hall or as you're coming into the living room from the kitchen or something, you don't see the, those holes for the pocket screws in the side of the computer monitor. Originally, I wanted to mount it in the hallway, um, but uh, for now at least, we've got it mounted behind the couch just sitting on a floating shelf. So uh, it may get moved in the future. Uh, we we kind of like what it was. We just plugged it in temporarily. Uh, just, to, just to check the pictures um, after we've got it painted and we kind of liked it where, it where it was so you see I put uh, pocket screws in the edge it goes into the face uh, frame and then I put some on the end to connect it to the other uh, pieces of, of, the, of the backboards and now I'm going to start fitting it up put more glue on there that's really what holds it uh, and it's just uh, construction plywood, it's not birch or, or cabinet grade. And again, I, I sanded it pretty good and then I, I painted it, so it turned out really nice. And we uh, didn't expect it to be you know, handled, so it, it works out really good. I, again, I probably would not do three quarter inch next time. I would probably go with at least half inch from the face frame. Uh, the back and frame probably could still be three quarter inch. That's where your strength comes in. That's what's going to do the most of the holding. Uh, the face frame probably could have been a half inch. And, and, and it's still going to find uh, maybe even three eighths. I, I probably still go with half inch just for a week. Because that monitor uh, is an older monitor. Uh, it's a flat screen, uh, but it's one of the first flat screens. So it's it's fairly heavy uh, compared to some of my other uh, newer flat screens. So. It together here, put these sides on, and then when you see the, the stringers go going from the side pieces, those will get screwed into the other back pieces, and that's gives it side to side strength. So, uh, what we're talking about here, there, if not helping, we're just going to make it tall. So, just put the back screws in there, and let it dry. I think I'll show you one. I think this is the uh, this is the second version that I built. I think the cutting was from the first one I built. I think this is actually the Dale, so I had to rebuild it. I, I, just, I redid the assembly. Uh, I think I, I'm pretty sure it's the first time I built it. Uh, it started raining, so I didn't get good footage anyway. So it was nice to be able to go ahead and redo it. 
Now this is going was intended to be the top piece or, or the bottom piece so that the wires could hang out. Uh, and plus allow for ventilation. You see it's a little shorter than than the side pieces. The top one and the other piece is flush with the side pieces. Uh, you got dust and then they give us a little amount too. So, uh, so here we're gonna put in the tiger screws in the end so that it could bonds to the side pieces. And you can start to see it's, it's a little chunky for a, a digital picture frame. Um, it was made out of scrap too, so it's what I had about it uh, from my previous project. So uh, sometimes you just go with what you got. Uh, you know, you want to do something different. Do something different. Like, mostly I wanted to see if it would work and see how it would, uh, see how it looked in the finished product. Uh, I may build some more of these in the future and I may I may put those in the living room and give these to some of the kids or I may take the frame back off and make a new one. I was prepared for it. Or maybe you can put some, some, some routing and some forms on the, on the outside and put it up some. So you see this piece, it tends to be the top piece and it, it's flush with the sides. Going back, make sure they're all good and tight, and now our frame is finished. So you can see the front face there. Let me go back and put some caulking into this front. And now I'm starting to do the assembly and do the fit. I took the, the plastic pieces off of the computer monitor, and there's what's left in the guts. It's just a, a metal backing. And the LCD screen in the front. And what I decided to do was find the center line of, of each opening. So I found the center line on all four corners. And then I took the center of the monitor and I marked it so you want to measure it, find the center and mark that. And then I just lined up all four center lines so that it was it was at least uh, centered up inside the square. And which turned out there was about uh, eighth inch to a quarter inch around the edge. Uh, but it gives you a little room to move. So I'll mark off four corners and then I'll stick it back in there while I'm up and then I'll just put some screws on it hold it in there in place. Mostly right now I'm just doing the fit. Trying to see what all I can get in there and how I can route the wires. It turns out I put it up at the bottom in the wrong direction. At the bottom facing me instead of the bottom and the bottom of the frame. But it turned out alright because we ended up sitting on the floating shelf. So Makes me want of the uh, opening to be on the top now, anyway. So, next I'm just trying to line up the marks so I get them as close as I can. Uh, some of them I had to extend, they weren't quite long enough. Now I'm just going to take some drywall screws and bundle up against the monitor uh, just to kind of hold it in place. The head on the screws actually actually pins it in there pretty good. Uh, I've laid it around a couple of times and it hasn't, it hasn't come loose at all. So. I intended just to do this to uh, to, to see the fit. Uh, but it turns out it held it cut really well, so uh, I didn't bother going back and put anything else in there. Uh, just put one on each corner now, and then I go back and put a second one on each corner. I'm trying to get that. I kind of ended up, got a couple on the bottoms, and a couple on the sides. I can see me moving around. It doesn't shape that long, so I'm going to leave it. I uh, think it gives you an idea of what it looks like. After you sand it and paint it, uh, you can't even see the frame. There is the media player that I got off Amazon. You see the USB or the SD card that you got the pictures on, put it in there. And I'm connecting with a CRT uh, board. Now here is before I found out that there was a difference between this Dell and the e machine. Uh, there, is, there will be an adapter where that uh, connection is later. And we'll, I'll continue to use the CRT line into the monitor, but so. <clears throat> I intended to put it on the on the side, um, but there's enough room to go ahead and mount it right where it is. And plus, that gives me access to uh, use the remote. So, same way I did the the monitor, I put some screws and kind of pin the pin the wires in there so that they don't come loose. So this works pretty well while you're adjusting things. 
Uh, several times I came back and adjusted where the, where the uh, screws were, so I adjust the fit and give me more room. And then I came back with some hot glue and some wire ties and kind of firmed that up. Screw. Took the screw and took the wire tie and kind of, kind of tied them off to it. I'm not sure how much wire I should leave out, so I'm kind of playing with it right now and seeing how much I need. Uh, this is where I was intending to test it out, and I found out that the, uh, it needed the adapter. So I'll cut from here and go back out. Ordered the adapter off Amazon, it came in, and uh, I redid this part. So I plugged it up, we didn't have it happen, so you know, I was a little bummed out. That's also why I, didn't, I was going to stop and paint it right then, but didn't. So now I've got the adapter. Uh, you see it's in a little black box next to the next to my hand. I put a little hot glue on the media player, and you see I already had the hot glue on it from where I had fitted it up prior to needing the adapter. So put some hot glue on there, mount it to the to the frame. I don't need to do it a lot faster than that because the frame is cold, so it doesn't hug me up too fast. There's the adapter. It, put, it goes from the HDMI to a CRT. I think they call it an active uh, HDMI converter. Um, some of them you need to put uh, its own power source to. That one that does come with the ability to run um, a USB, micro USB power source to it, um, but my monitor didn't need it, so I just because you've got a passive HDMI converter there, so I'm not sure why the CRT to CRT didn't work. Uh, it did on my e-machine, but it did not work on the tail. So I uh, converted it to from HDMI to CRT and plugged in my wire. Um, that wire came with the monitor. I already had it, so that's why I was trying to use it. Now once you get them plugged in together, uh, you just turn it on from the back. Once it comes on, this is your home screen. And it's got little buttons that you can control it. Or it's got a remote that you can you can scroll through. And then you just find the file. And I had to start about a few times. It's hard to read the, the directions on it from the front. And so I found the files. Selected it. Um, Selected my SD card right here and selected the folder that I have the pictures in and select the play all. And there's a function there to tell it to, to repeat. There's one to tell it to be random. It, it, you can do quite a bit with that media player. It's actually pretty nice. The media player was about $30 off Amazon. Uh, like I said, I got it because it had the CRT connection already. If you don't need that, and I think going back, I wouldn't buy it. I would buy one of the cheap ones. They, they sell it for about $19. Uh, and then the adapter is like 6 or $7. So I could have done this for about $25. Uh, I ended up doing it for about $35. Uh, because then I had the CRT screen uh, uh, prior to uh, starting this project. So and I had the scrap wood already available. So. All in, uh, I've, I've been plenty of the thrift stores around here. You can get a monitor from 10 to 15 dollars, uh, and, and you can buy some of this scrap wood. You know, get a pallet, that a lot of people do. Um, you could probably do this project for 50 dollars if you didn't already have a computer monitor. All right, thanks for watching.